Okay, so. Okay, so last time. So I, as I told you guys, I sent you the topics you need to study for the final exam. For example, if I tell you, you need to draw, you need to draw a register. You don't need to, you have to be careful here because I see some students wasting a lot of time in exams. When I tell you draw, just draw. When I say explain, you need to explain. You understand what I'm saying? So I, when I tell you draw, draw, and then you also explain, I'm not looking for that. You are just wasting your time. So you have to be careful about what I'm asking in exam. So if I just say draw it, so you just need to know how to draw these ones. Okay. Uh, so last time I I explained what are counters. Okay. I told you we have two types of counters. We have count up and count down. Oops. Okay, I told you have a count up and count down. Also, uh, I told you we have two types of counter. We have what we call a rebel. We have what we call a rebel counter and we have syn synchronous counter, okay? Uh, I made it very easy. If you have a three bit counter, that means you have three flip flops. If you have 10 10 bit counter, that means you have 10 flip flops. So the number of flip flops is equal to the number of bits in the counter. The main difference, as I told you last time, between rebel and synchronous synchronous counters is where the clock comes from. You know, any any flip flop needs a clock. So where this clock comes from? Here, in case you can tell from the English name, synchronous. Always when you see the word synchronous, means we have the same clock. The same clock, that's the meaning synchronized or synchronous. So as you will see today, here in synchronous, so we have here a number of flip flops. So they have they share exactly the same, same clock. So I'm gonna explain this one today. How can we do it? But in case of rebel, as I told you last time, so here is the first flip flop receives uh, receives the clock from from input, and then the, the output of this flip flop is gonna be is gonna trigger the next one. So it's gonna be the clock for the next one, and this one is gonna trigger next one, and so on. Okay. So this is how how we do it. Okay. And simply, as I told you, if you just understand what I'm saying here, everything will be easy. So if this is a counter, if the counter is 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 correct, this. this this is how the timing diagram should be. This is how it should be to, to get zero, one, two, three, four until 50. It has to be this way. And then we had a very simple observation. The observation is, as you see here, because this clock is gonna trigger this flip flop and this one is gonna trigger this one. This one is gonna trigger this flip flop. This one is gonna trigger this flip flop. So we had an observation here. This observation is telling me, so here, this one has to toggle at falling edges from this one, okay? So, 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 and, and if you look at this one, this one has to, has to, has to toggle at every falling edge, it has to toggle, okay, from this one. This one has to toggle every falling edge from this one. Is that okay? So, same thing, this one is going to toggle at every falling edge from this one. So, all what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make, I'm going to make the flip flop in toggle mode toggle mode, okay? So what do you mean by toggle mode? That means it's just toggling. All the time it's toggling. How can you do that? Very simple. So every time there is a clock, it's gonna toggle, okay? And how can you do that? If it is T flip flop, T flip flops, I just put one here. If it is JK flip flop, if it is JK, so I'm gonna connect them together and put one. So this is toggling. So every time it toggles. If it is D flip flop, okay? If it is D flip flop, so I'm gonna connect to Q prime here. So every time, every time, so, so here uh, we have Q here, right? And we have toggle the here, okay? So when the clock comes, this toggle is gonna become here and the inverter here. So every time you can see we do toggling, okay? And after that, 
it was very easy to to uh, to do uh, to do the uh, circuits this way. Uh, if you understand how we made it, it will be easy for you to memorize. I hate in education. I hate that students just memorize things without understanding it. You understand? Something? I hate this kind of learning. Okay, but if you understand how it works, it should be very easy for you. In exams, you don't need to, you don't need to do exactly the same thing like, like this one, okay? For example, you may not need to put reset. I don't care about reset, okay? It, it, they don't need to be vertical this way. You can make it horizontal, I don't care, okay? I, what I care about is, is the input here to connect it to this clock or not? Is the output from this one, it trigger the next one or not? Output of this one is triggering this one or not? You got what I'm saying? And also, is this one in, tog in toggling mode or not? So this is in, to in toggle because I connect Q, Q bar to here because I'm using D flip flop. If I use T flip flop, just I can put once here. Is that okay? By the way, from when I graded the test test, I find some students which is, which is, so what I wanna tell you here. So for example, in exams, you don't need, you don't need to do this way. You can simply say this, what I'm gonna explain right now, it's the same thing, but it's gonna make the uh, the the figure or the drawing more s s simpler. Look what I'm saying. So what I'm saying, simply you can say this is T and one. That's it. You don't need you don't need to make a lot of wires this way. Okay. So just put here one. Just put one. Put one here. This should be enough. Okay. Same thing. That's what I noticed in exams. For example, if you wanna design a decoder or encoder or something like that. For example, here you you wanna connect S S S zero S one. Okay. And then, for example, I, I0, you can mix this way. I'm totally fine. You got what I'm saying? And for this one can be S, S0 prime, S1, whatever, okay? So you don't need, because it's gonna complete, I'm totally fine, but I'm saying this will be easier for you and easier for me when I grade, okay? The other way you can do it, and that's what I do in most of the slides, actually, uh, S, S0, S1, and then you can put here inverter, and then you can see this one, it should come from here, this one should come from here, or this one should come from here. This is somehow complicated, but if you do this way, I'm totally fine with that, okay? Anyway, so, so today, today I'm gonna explain synchronous counters, okay? So as I told you, number one, all of them are connected to the same clock. So how I can design it? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna do the same thing right now. This is a timing diagram for the counter, okay? But this time I'm not gonna count on the clock because this clock is not input. To, this clock is input for all of them. It's synchronous. So this is the same clock input to all of them. So now similar to what I did in the previous one, I'm gonna show you an observation. And based on this observation, I'm gonna show you how I can design it, okay? So let's see what observation I have here. Look at this observation. I can see um, this one has to toggle when A1 has to toggle every time when A0 is one and where there is for sure when there is a clock and A0 is one. Look here. So every time A0 is one, this one has to toggle. A0 is one, has to toggle. A0 is one, has to toggle. E0 is one, so when E0 is one and, and, uh, and H comes, this one has to toggle. When E0 is one, has to toggle. E0 is one, has to toggle. This is an observation, okay? So as an observation here, A1 always has to toggle when E0 is one. When it is one and there is an H, okay? Look at the next one here, A2. A2 is gonna toggle when the previous two are ones, when this one is one and this one is one. You got what I'm saying? <laughs> it's somehow interesting because I want to make the design easy. I'm not, I don't want to do like a sequential. You can do, I already did sequential circuit, but now based on observation, I will see how I can mix a circuit, how, how I can design the circuit so that it gives me, it gives me this, this timing diagram. So if you notice here, this one has to toggle when this is one and one. This is for if all of them, yes, for all of them. If you see here, I'm gonna toggle here, one and one. This one here, I'm gonna toggle here, it has to be one and one, okay? I'm gonna toggle here, it has to be one and one. Observation, right? Same thing for this one. This one is gonna toggle of all the previous ones are ones. So if you look here, so this is one and zero, okay? One and one and zero, okay? One, zero, one, no, to no toggle. You can see toggle is gonna happen when all of previous one, 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 okay? So here, toggle also should happen here when it is one, one, one. Okay, so let me summarize the observation because I'm gonna do the design based on this, uh, based on this one. A0 
has to toggle all the time for every clock. So every clock is zero has to toggle all the time. Okay. So every 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 every, every clock here, every edge, this one has to toggle. Okay. Okay. How can you design this one? Very simple. So let me see here if I have a space. Yeah. For example, here I'm gonna say this is a zero. Okay. Okay. Let me. That's okay. For example, this is A0. And this one, for example, if I use T flip flop, I'm going to put one here, and the, the clock is here. You remember, the clock is going to be the same clock. It's going to be connected to all of them. So the first one here has to be toggle all the time. Every time there is a clock, has to toggle. Is that okay? So I can do A0 this way. So this can satisfy, this can satisfy the first one. Okay. Look at the second one here. And the second one here, this one has to toggle when there is an edge, when there is an edge, and this one is one. If it is not one, so for example here, there is an edge here, but this one is zero, okay? So that's why no change, okay? So the second one here has to toggle when this one is one. So how can we do that? Very simple. So I can take E0 here, I can connect it to T flip flop here, and this is E1, and for sure, as I told you, the same clock is connected here. So that if I do this way, this one is gonna toggle when A0 is one. When it is zero, this one doesn't toggle. Is that okay? Okay. Let's see the next one. The next one here, I told you, uh, E2. E2 has to toggle when the previous two are one and one. Okay, how can I do that? Very simple. All what I'm gonna do here, this is E2. All of them have the same clock this way, okay? So what I'm saying, and this is T flip flop. So I have, in, in order, in order to make this one toggling, so I have to put one here. Is that okay? And and this one has to toggle when this is one and this is one. Look what, how, how I'm gonna do it. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna do here and gate. Is that okay? And then I'm gonna connect this one to here. Very simple. So that this one has to be one, and this one has to toggle when this is one and one. Okay. If any one of zero, this one becomes zero. And this one, no change. And this is exactly what the timing diagram is doing. It makes sense? Again, if you look at the third one here, this one has to toggle when the, th the three, the, the three, uh, all the previous ones are ones. So here I can do it this way. Sorry. This is A3. I'm going to connect the clock this way. And then what I can do here, uh, what I have to input here, okay, it has to be A0. It has to be A1, also it has to be A2. Make sense? A0, A1, A2, this way. So that the T is gonna be one and it's gonna toggle when all of them are ones, okay? I can do it in a, in a different way. Okay, I, what I can do here, I can take the output of this one and then I connect to this one. It's the same, it's the same thing, okay? Because the output of this one here is A0 and A1 and then I'm gonna add here and A2. Make sense? That's easy. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. So this is exactly what I did here in the slide, but I added a small thing. What I added here, I wanna I, I, I wanna an input, okay? This input should count or, or both, okay? Count or both, so stop counting or count, okay? I wanna add it. So the way I can add it is, for example here, I'm gonna add here one input. If this input is one, that means you want it to count. If it is zero, it should not count, make sense? So I'm gonna do a little bit modification to this one, okay? So the way you have to do it is, if I don't want to count things, that means here should be zero, 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 zero. No change, right? If you don't want to count, zero, 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 okay? So that is why, what I, the way I can do it, I'm gonna put here, I'm gonna put here and the gate, and then I'm gonna put here one, and then I'm gonna put this input here, okay? So that, so that here, if the input is zero, I'm gonna get zero here, no change, okay? And if, uh, so no change, and if it is one, I'm gonna put here one for this one to toggle. Same thing here, I'm gonna put here and gate, and this and gate, I'm gonna put it a zero, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this one x, okay? I'm gonna put x here, okay? Same thing here, I'm gonna put x here. So that, 
in order in order to get what if x is zero because this is end you know in end if one input is zero the output is zero so you can see if x is zero i'm gonna get zero here 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 and by this way uh, you can see no change but if x is one so i'm gonna get here i'm gonna get here one and then i'm gonna get here e zero and then i'm gonna get here e zero and e one i'm gonna get here E0 and E1 and E2. Is that okay? So, and this is actually what I did here. So, I, that's what you see here. So, what I did here, this is similar to what I explained, but there is a small difference. Okay. Uh, the difference is this is JK flip flop. It's not T flip flop. It's the same thing. But in case of T flip flop, you have only one input. If you want it, if you want it to toggle, you put one in T flip flop. In JK flip flop, if you if you want it to toggle, I'm gonna connect it together, both one. So if you see here how this one work is here. So we have here one input. This input I'm gonna call it enable count enable. Okay, you can see here if the input uh, you uh, here I put end here. This end should have the enable. Okay, um, for example I'm gonna call it x x here, and then here we have e zero. So it is very simple. If x, so let's let's have the first case. The first case when, when x is one, when you want to count, when x is one. So here one and e zero. So I'm gonna put e zero here. Okay. And that's exactly what I explained to you before. Same thing here. I'm gonna get the output of this one. I'm gonna connect e one here. Okay. So if x is one, this is e zero, and this one is zero and e one. So j and k is equal to one when e is e zero is one and e one is one. So to toggle. Okay, same thing here. I'm gonna get this output, then I'm gonna connect it to the, the, this one, Q1 here, so that the input here to JK, JK, the input to them is E0, E1, uh, E3, this way, okay? So this is if, if X is one, okay? However, if you make X is zero, if you put here zero, look what's gonna happen. Okay, this is AND gate, so regardless, you have here zero in the AND gate, so this is zero. So here, and because this is zero, so you have here zero, and because this is zero, you have everything is zero. So J and K, you remember, when J equal to K equal zero, no change. When J equal to K equal one, toggle, okay? So by this way, when this input is zero, so actually all of them, and this one actually also should be zero, zero, so that no change, okay? Any questions? Anyway, you should understand how, how it works. Uh, also, you should understand, for example, this one is four, uh, you have four uh, four bits. Uh, can you design it for five bits, for six bits? Yeah, because you just repeat. You cut, I'm saying, two bits, yes. If two bits, you can just cut here, you stop here, okay? Three bits, you can stop here. If you wanna add one more, if you wanna add one more, so you need to have E0, E1, E3, okay? And E4. I think, that, I th sorry, this is E2, I'm sorry, this is a mistake. So this one is coming from here, this one is E2, okay? Coming from here. And uh, so if you wanna add one more, one more stage, okay? So it's gonna be, you are gonna get the output from here and then you are gonna get here a E3, E3 input here to the end, end gate. So it should become E0, E1, E2, and E3, okay? So it's like it has a pattern, you just you need to follow the pattern. Any questions? Okay, so here I'm explaining if, the, if this enable, count enable is zero, everything is zero. That's why no, it change. No counting, it's got no counting, okay? But if I put here one, I'm gonna put here E0, I'm gonna put here E0 and E1, I'm gonna put here E0 and do E1 and E3. And that's exactly the same observation, the same observation I, ha I had here, okay? So the input here has to be toggle, when this one is one, that's why this one is, has to be E1. This one, this one has to, uh, this one has to be, uh, uh, this one has to be E1, E0 and E1, when both of them are ones. This one has to toggle when E1, 1, 1, one. that's why it has to be E0, E1, E2, okay? Connected to JK. Any questions? Okay, so, also here, I'm similar to what I did in the rebel. Here I'm gonna explain how can we do synchronous count down, not count up, count down. Okay, so again, I'm following the same, the same thing. I'm gonna look at the timing diagram. 
Then I'm going to see what observation I have here in the timing diagram. So if you look at the timing, this is counted down. So I'm going to start from 15. After 15, it has to be 14, 13, 12, until 0. And then after 0, it has to come to 15 again. This is by definition what is counted down. Is that OK? So if this is counted down, this should be the timing diagram. So it looks like that. Is that OK? So let's see what observation I have here and how this observation is going to help me to do the design. So look here. Let's look at the first one. It's very obvious for the first one here. Every time, it's all the time it toggles. So A0, it's just toggling. All the time it toggles. Every time there is a, a rising or oh, toggle, rising toggle, rising toggle. Is that OK? This is for the first one. So the first one is just very straightforward. So this, to design this one. So here, for example, if I use T flip flop, I'm going to put here one, and then I'm going to connect the clock here. That's it. So that this one, every time there is a rising edge, is going to toggle. Very easy, right? Now, now, look at this. You, you will see something very interesting here. It's, it's really very interesting. You will see right now. So anyway, let's, let's see. OK, look at the second one. When this one has to toggle, this one has to toggle. Again, don't look only at one case. You have to look at all cases. OK, so toggle is here. When the previous one is 0, not 1 as before, when the previous one is 0, it toggle. Is this is happening in all of them? Let's see. This is zero, and then it toggles here. When the when the when the previous one is zero, it has to toggle. Okay. Here also there is a toggle here, and this one was zero as well. When this one zero, toggle. So okay, zero toggle. You have to toggle. So this one has to toggle all the time when a zero when a zero is zero. So it's the same observation we had before. But A0 was 1 before. So if I go before, this one was toggle when this one is 1. Now it has to toggle when it is 0. OK? So the interesting part, I'm going to do very little change to what I did before. You know what it changed? I'm going to tell you. What I did before was, so this is for E1. E1. OK? So for example, if I use T flip flop, OK? And the clock is here. So I, I, I want this, this flip flop to toggle. OK, when this one is 0, OK? So all what I'm going to do, and instead of taking the output from here, as I did before, I'm going to take it from here, from Q prime. Because when this one is 1, this one is 0. So I'm going to connect this one here. So that when this one is 0, this one is 1, and toggle happens. And this is exactly the case I have here. <laughs> so what you see, I'm laughing because it's interesting. You can see. It's the same thing I did before. The only difference is what I did before, when, when I connect this T to Q, it's going to count up. When I connect it to Q prime, it's going to count down. Very interesting. Because when I connect this one to Q, so this one is going to toggle when this one is 1. And this was the observation when, for count up. But for count down here, I'm going to connect it to Q prime. OK, let's look at the other cases. For example, here, this one has to toggle when the previous ones are 0 and 0. Toggle here again when the previous ones is 0 and 0. So this one is going to toggle on the previous ones and 0 and 0. That means when the previous ones are 0 and 0, this one has to toggle. OK, so all, again, all what I'm going to do here is this is T flip flop. I'm going to connect here E0 prime and E1 prime. Okay? So that when E0 is when E0 is 0 and E1 E1 is 0, okay? So prime prime is going to make it 1 1. So I'm going to get 1 here. You got what I'm saying? So again if you look at the design here for this one, it's exactly same thing like this one. It's exactly similar to this one. And this is an interesting bar. But instead of using A, I'm going to use A prime. For all of them. So I'm not going to use A, I'm going to use A prime. Very simple modification. Okay. Same thing also if you look at next one here, this one has to toggle when all previous ones are zeros. Again, previous ones here, this is A, this is Q, Q. Okay. But T flip flop has to toggle when the input is one. That's why I'm going to take Q prime. So I can say this one has to toggle when the Q is zero, Q is zero, Q is zero. Or I can say it in a different way. When Q prime is one, Q prime is one, Q prime is one. 
You understand? It's very interesting. So all what you have to do is, it's the same design, but if you connect it to A, it's count up. If you connect it to A prime, okay, it's gonna be count down. Very interesting. Yeah? And that's exactly what I did here. So if you look at this circuit, you compare it with the circuit I have here, it's identical. It's the same thing. The only difference here, I just connect it here to A prime. Okay. So by this way, here is the input here for JK is gonna be E zero prime. That means this one is gonna toggle when 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 A zero is zero or A zero prime is one. This one is gonna toggle when A zero equal A one equal zero. So that A zero prime and and A one prime equal to one. Same thing for this one. Okay, very simple, very interesting. Is that okay? Any questions? Yeah, sure. That's a very good question. Yes, continue. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, I think the pure question is that here, I, I'm assuming the flip-flops I have, I just wanted to change the logic of you what you mentioned. So now I just use the, what kind of flip-flops you have. Here I assume the flip-flops I have are trigger, triggering at the rise. Is that okay? So what if the flip-flop I have are triggering at the falling? You got what I'm saying? What change I have to make here? What a change I have to make? That should be your question. You got what I'm saying? So um, just think about it. The, what, what I need to change here, if it is at the falling instead of at the rising. So here in this case, I assume as I assume here, this is the timing diagram. When this one, when they are triggered at the rising. What happens if it is triggered at the falling? What a change would happen here? What Will I have the same observation or I, or I need to change my observation so that this, my circuit has to do this timing diagram. You understand the idea? So what you have to do, you need to think about it. You need to draw. You need to draw this timing diagram at the falling and then see if you have the same observation to do the same circuit or you need to change the observation you have. Okay? But I think I, my short answer is it's not going to, in this case, it's not going to make a difference in this case. It's not going to make a difference. So here, if it's just if it's falling, if you just react to falling, so everything will be shifted. So this one has to come to here. So you see, still we have the same observation. Got what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, but what I what I want to say here, maybe I misunderstood you, but maybe other students also will be confused about this. Look here, guys. Um, I should, I should. So here, I just, I need to make my design based on the flip-flops I have, the type of the flip-flops I have. So if the flip-flops are rising, so I have to make my design for rising. If it's falling, so I have to make it for falling. Is that okay? So I think what I, I understood from you and I may be mistaken is this, this one, what we have here for rising, this one for rising, what if what what if I have here this what I have is falling? Do I need to do to do add some inverters here to to make it rising? No, it's not this way. It is it is, or maybe you didn't mean that. But for the other so the way is based on what type of flip loops you have. You have to do the design based on that. Okay, but again, you know the difference between rising and falling is very simple. You just put inverter here. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So if you have if you have a flip flop this way, and and you wanna you if you put inverter here, it becomes uh, it become this one without it without the inverter, it's falling. With the inverter, it is uh, sorry, this one is rising. With the inverter, it's falling. The same thing here. This one is is uh, is this one is falling. If you add inverter here, you make it rising. But I don't recommend you to do something like that. What I'm recommending is based on what type you flip flop you have, you have to make the, your design based on that. So that's why. This is a very good question. That's why for all the counters I have, I just give you one design 
for all of them. I give you one design. So for example, here I used, I used um, a falling, but you need to think, what if it is rising? Do I need to change the design or not? You got what I'm saying? Anyway, so, so let me tell you the conclusion now. So the conclusion we have now is, uh, the conclusion we have here is for, for this synchronous, uh, for this synchronous count, uh, count up and count down is, if you take, it is exactly same circuit. That's what I said. It is exactly same th same circuit. But the difference is, if you take if if you take from here, if you take it for if you connect E zero here, okay, it becomes up. If you connect E one here, so that it is E zero E one, it counts up. But if you take it from E one here, E one here, if E one comes here, so it counts down. You get what I'm saying? It's like you have selector. If I select E zero. I'm gonna make it up. If I select E1, I make it down. Okay, that is why. Let me let me finish. Okay, before I take this, I'm sorry. Uh, e0 prime. I'm sorry. Okay, so either you take E0 or you take E0 prime. Okay, so if I take E0, it becomes up. If I take E0 prime, it becomes down. Is that okay? Based on that, sometimes here we have we have a counter that can count up and down. Okay, based on a selector. So here I can put a selector here. Based on the selector I have, I select count up or count down, okay? It looks so complicated, but it is not. So if you see here, I'm gonna get E0, I'm gonna get E0 prime, and this will be like a multiplexer, it's a selector, okay? So based on the value you have here, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna input here E0 or E0 prime. You got what I'm saying? So. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this one uh, uh, by the end of uh, this lecture because I want to move to the next section and then I'm gonna come. But I give you the I'm gonna come into it again. But this is the main idea. So the main idea, I have here like a multiplexer here. This is like a multiplexer. So based on the selector, okay. So the same circuit can count up or can count down, okay. Based on what what parameter uh, these two inputs I have. So if you put here, we have up. And down. So if you put here one and x here, so this one is gonna count up. If you put zero and one, it's gonna count down. If you put zero, zero, no change. So, and the main idea, I'm gonna give you more details, but I wanna just start the next section because of the time. But the main idea here, it is the main idea. We have an observation. If I connect E0, count up. If I connect E0 prime, count down. You guys, I'm saying. So I make a selector here. So this part, this part, I'll act like a multiplexer. And based on the value I have here, either because if you see here, we have E0 here. And we have we have E0 prime here. Okay. So one of them should come out here, either E0 or E0 prime, based on your selection here. But anyway, so I'm gonna come to this one, but I want to move to the next section. But uh, I'm gonna leave this one to the end. But it's the same, nothing is new here. Okay. You have question here or you're okay? Any question, guys? Okay. So as I told you guys here, the purpose of this course is to learn some basic component, not to create a system. In the future, you will learn how can you create a system using this component. So now you should know what, when I say register, you know what is a register. Counter, that's what, this is all the component you are gonna use in the future. Multiplexer, encoder, decoder, these are the main thing we are using, okay? Uh, shift registers and so on. So one of the, one of the important thing in any, any digital system is a memory, RAM, random access memory, okay? So usually in any system we have a RAM. So here I wanna give you a very uh, basic idea about uh, is a memory, okay? How, how it looks like and uh, how, how we, it is connected and so. So in memory, what, what is memory? What, what, what memory here I mean a RAM. So what is RAM? RAM simply is, listen to me, RAM, I have, locations so this is location zero location number one location number two location number three location number four and so on and every location i store one byte i'm sorry this should be eight not 16 i'm sorry it, we store one byte so I change all of this makes them eight okay so in every location we store we store one byte okay so again ram is used to store data so that means if you have a ram if you have some data listen to me in any digital system, you have some data. This data can come from a sensor. 
you have sensors. The sensor is measuring temperature, measuring something, and you wanna you wanna store this data somewhere. Usually, you put it in the RAM. Okay. Uh, or this data may be coming from the user. You ask the user, please enter your name. So I'm gonna take a letter by letter, convert it to ASCII, store them in a RAM. So RAM in general should store data. Is that okay? And, and all what I have to do is I have to write to the RAM or read from the RAM. You can read or write. That's this is the operation we do all the time. Okay, read or write. So the RAM in RAM, you can see the RAM as locations. Location number zero, location number one, location number two, location number three, and so on. And every location, we store one piece of data, okay, which is a byte. RAM is, a, is something you can design, okay? It's like, for example, you have a T-shirt or you have, you have a shirt. You can design it in the way you, you, you want to design it, okay? Uh, so... I can, in every location, I can store one bit. Okay, you can if you want to do it this way. Or I can store two bits. So here, every I can make it so that every piece of information is four bits, five bits, whatever you can do. It's just a design. However, however, it's a standard term. Usually we do it. This is a standard. If you, so if you buy if you buy a memory, usually the standard is in every location, we, we, we store one piece of information, and this one piece of information is a byte. Very important, guys, when I say one piece of information, what it means? It means you cannot cut it. So if you have a byte, eight bits, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to just get, to read one bit or read two bits. No, it's this one piece. So if I read, I have to read the piece. I have to read the eight bits together, because this eight bits is one number, like voltage, temperature, one number. You get what I'm saying? So I have to read a byte. Or if I want to write, I have to write a byte. I can't write, I can't read two bits or write two bits. No, it's unit. Okay. So you can see the RAM. RAM is in RAM number one, we have locations, as you see here. So for every location, you have location number. You have location number. Every location we, we store one piece of data, which is a byte. Is that okay? This is number one. Number two. What we do with RAM is either you read or you write, okay? For example, if I wanna read the location number three, so I'm gonna tell the RAM, I wanna read location number three. So the RAM should give me EF, if it's gonna be given to me, okay? This, you read one, one piece of information at location number three, okay? If I wanna write in, in location number three, I wanna write three, uh, three A, for example. So what's gonna happen? This 3A is going to come to here. It's going to replace the old one. So the old one is gone. You overwrite it. So if, if this in this location, I have some data, and you overwrite, so the old one is gone, the information, the new one is going to be written. Okay. So let me tell you the conclusion before I move forward. What's the conclusion? In Usually, in, in any digital system, we need what we call a memory. Okay. Here, I focus on a RAM. Okay. Random access memory. Okay. Uh, and the way you can see, you can visualize memory as locations. You have locations. In every location, you store only one piece of information. Okay? So every location has content. I call it a content. Okay? So the content here, I mean the information is stored in this location. Also, every location has the location number, okay? which is we call an address. Is that okay? So if I want to read something from the RAM, I can I can I just say the RAM? RAM, can you please read? The RAM till is gonna tell you I have more than one thousand location. Which location you wanna read? Can I just tell the RAM? Please, RAM, right? No, the RAM is gonna reply to me and tell you I have more than one thousand. Which location? That is why when I read or write, I have to tell the RAM which location you wanna read. Okay, for example, I, I'm gonna tell the RAM, if you see the RAM here, I'm gonna, we have some pins here, some, some pins. These pins are at ad address, and then we have data here, okay? So if I want, and you have you some control unit, con control bin, right, read or write, okay? So if I wanna, if I wanna read from the RAM, for example, I wanna read location number three, so I have to put here in the address number three. Is that okay? 
and then I have I have to trigger or I have to activate the RAM. So I have to put here one and put zero here. So once I do that, once I put the location, which address the address or the location I want to read, I just I put one here in this control bin. I put one. The hardware of the RAM is going to read the content of location number three. It's going to output it here to the data. And then you can read it. So this is what we call reading operation. So to read, to read from RAM, number one, you have to put which address you need to read. Okay. Number two, you have to put one here in the read. Okay. After that, the RAM, after some, for sure, there is a delay. Okay. After some delay, the, the data stored in this location is going to come out here. You can just read it. And when you read, you actually, you just take a copy. You're not going to change the content. It's going to be the same. You just take a copy. You got what I'm saying? However, if you write, when you write, you actually overwrite. So you're going to, the old one is gone. So here in this location is FF. If I, if I write here AA, so this one is going to be replaced by AA. So FF is gone. Make sense? So now, this is, so in order, that's what I'm explaining here. If you want to, here I just want to show you, uh, but before, before I go to this point, uh, so now you should understand, we have address. This address has to, has to tell which location you want to read or write, because every time you can only read, read one location. In every location, we store one byte. You got what I'm saying? So what if I want to store, what if I want to read 10 locations? Okay, you need to read one by one. So if I'm going to say, I, read, I want to read location number one. When you are done, repeat again. I want to read location number two. So, but it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, you can write only one, one byte or re read one byte at a time. At each time, one byte. Okay. So uh, usually, as I told you, this is like a standard. In every, in every location, we store a byte. It's a standard. Okay. Uh, so you need read a byte or store a byte. So for, for addresses here, if you have a memory, listen to me, there is, if you have a memory, a chip, a chip this way, and I have only three bit for addresses, three bit for addresses. How many locations, there is a relation between how many location we have, how big is the memory, or how many location we have the memory, and the number of bits in the address here. So for example, if I have three bits here, the address is three bit, that means we should have two, two to the power of three, okay, locations or two. So this memory can store up to two to the power of three bytes. Why? Simply because three bits, as you know from this course, three bit can, can represent uh, two, to, two to the power of three look numbers. So how many, how many different number you can have here? Seven numbers from zero to seven. That's why. There is a relation between number of addresses and ha we have here and the number of locations we have. In general, if 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 the memory, if you buy a memory and this memory has any bit addresses, that means this memory should have how many locations? Two to the power of n. You understand what I'm saying? Be because based on what, what you learned in this course, if you have any bit, any bit can have numbers, okay? Uh, two to the power in numbers, okay? So, so that every location can have only one number, one number for every location. Any questions? That's good. And here I just give you, here, um, just to give you some idea, and that's already what I explained. If you have like a computer system, so have here a microprocessor, this, if you have a memory chip, Usually this memory chip, if you buy a memory chip, this memory chip should have some, some pins for addresses. It has some pins for data, okay, for data. And uh, eight bits for every location is, is one byte or eight bits. How many location we have, how many location or how many bytes I can store is two to the bar. If this is 16, so it should be two to the bar 16. This is the different locations I have. Is that okay? So that every binary number you have is going to be is going to be represented to one location in memory. Okay, physical location in memory. And the way it works is what I'm explaining here. If you just if you want to read, so I hear number one. If you want to read or write, you have to you have to tell you have to put the address. <laughs> Regardless, you have to tell me which byte 
because I can only read one byte at a time. You have to tell me which location. So regardless, if you are reading or writing, you have to put here address. This is number one. Number two, if you are reading, if you are reading, I just here, I'm going to put one here. I'm going to put zero here. When this happens, so the memory is going to copy. It's going to go to the location. For example, here I put location number 21. So the memory is going to go to location number one. It's going to read the byte there. It's going to copy it and put here in these pins. So the memory has, the. if you bring a chip, a memory chip, this memory chip has some pins for addresses. So also it has some pins for data. Okay. So once you do that, the content here is going to come here, and then the processor can read can read this data. Okay. You can only read one byte by byte by byte. Okay. Uh, what if you I want to write? Okay. If you want to write, number one, you have to put the address. You have to tell me which location you want to write. Number two, you also you have to put what data. For example, I want to put AF. So I want to store in location number 300, I want to store AF, okay? Is that enough? No, you have to tell the memory, I already put the address, I already put the data, please start start writing, okay? So by putting here one and putting zero here. Once you do that, the chip is gonna write. So it's gonna go to location number 300, okay? For example, this location has FF, so whatever there is gonna be uh, overwritten, so I'm gonna overwrite on this one, so now it should be AF. That okay? The old value is gone. Any questions? So now you should understand for any memory, uh, we have addresses. You should understand why we need addresses because you can read byte by byte, okay? Uh, the address is gonna, is gonna tell which byte you wanna read, okay? Also, we have data. Usually this data is eight bits, okay? Also, I'm here, I explained, if you have a memory chip, if you have a chip, hardware chip, this is how it should look like, and this is how you read or write from this chip. Any questions? Okay. So the next one here, I I'm going to give you some idea, some basic idea about it. Okay. So now I want to go inside the memory and see how it looks like from inside. Okay. Give you some basic idea from inside. So this is a memory. You can see the memory here has an address. Okay. And it has write enable or output enable. So if you want to, if you want to write, so I have to put here one, I have to put zero here. If you want to read, so you have to put here one, you have to put zero here. Is that okay? And this is, you have to put the address here, and then you are going to get the output from here, and then you are going to input the input from here. Okay, if, if you want to write something. I just want to give you some basic idea how, how this works. So here, I'm going to give you basic idea for a small memory. I'm assuming here in this memory, we have two-bit addresses, only two-bit addresses. As I told you, if you have two-bit addresses, so you should have four locations, two to the power of two, okay? That means, and in every location, I'm here, again, this is just a toy example. In every location, I'm storing the data is only two bits, something too simple, okay? So here, so here I have to, I have addresses here, which are two bits. So this is location, this, this two here is one piece of information, two bits. This is a second piece of information, Say a piece of information, a piece of information. Is that okay? And uh, um, so this is location number zero, location number one, location number two, location number three. That means that means the hardware circuit here, based on the hardware circuit we have here. So if you put if I put zero zero, okay. So I need to read this this one. If I put number one here, so I have to work on this one. So reading or writing. Uh, if I put here number two, so I have to work on this one, reading or writing. You understand what I'm saying? But, and this is also, every bit is stored in a flip-flop, but this is one piece of information. Okay? So this, the two bits here are, is one piece of information. That means I'm going to write the two or read the two. It doesn't make sense to read only one, because this is one piece of information. This one and this one. Okay? So either... I'm going to read this, 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 this piece of information or this piece of information or this piece of information or this piece of information, okay? Based on the address I have here, read or write, okay? So look how it works. So here I'm going to use, the idea is very simple. So here I'm going to use a decoder. Look here. Okay. So here I'm using, I'm using a decoder here two to four decoder, so that, listen to me, so that if I put zero, zero here, 
So this output, because this is a decoder, this output is one, and the other output still should be zero, zero, zero. And because of that, this zero, this the, the logic circuit here has to disable this one, 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 and enable this two. So that if you want to read or write, I'm going to read or write this two. You got what I'm saying? Because this one piece of information, because your address is zero, zero, okay? Now, I'm going to show you how, but, but this is the main idea. So the main idea now is also here, if I put here number one, so the decoder is going to output here zero. That's how the decoder works. Output here one, zero, zero. And because this is a zero, so these two are disabled. This is a one, so I enable this one, disable this one, disable this one. So if you want to read or write, I'm going to work on, on this location. You got it? Same thing, if I use number two, it's the same thing, number two. So what the decoder here is going to do is, it's gonna put here zero, zero, and then one. And this, the circuit I have here, the circuit has to enable this one and has to disable this one, disable this one, disable this one, so that if you wanna read or write, I'm gonna read or write from this location. Is that okay? Same thing for number three. So now I'm gonna explain how, how it works, but this is the main very high level uh, explanation to the idea. How, when you put a certain address because this is how memory works. I'm gonna put a certain address. So the data stored in this address has to get out. How this can happen? Hardware, how hardware can do that? So that's what I'm explaining here. This is how hardware can do it. When I put a certain address here, the decoder is gonna enable only this one, or this one, or this one, and this one. And then you can read from here, here, one of them, based on your, the address you have. Just a very high level description to how the memory from inside looks like. So you can see here, um, this is one, one location, one location in memory. It's, it has two, uh, two bits. Every bit is stored in a flip-flop, this way. Okay? So you can see, I'm gonna tell you the main idea before we proceed. So you can see here in this flip-flop, we have here D. If you see here, for example, let's look at this one here. Look at this D flip-flop. The D here is connected to input here. The D is connected to the input. Okay, so you know, in order, in order to change same thing here, and they are connected to the same clock. Okay, so in order, in order to write, if you wanna write to th these flip flops, so all what I need, I need just a clock here. I need an, a, a rising edge here. So this is how flip flop works, right? If there is a rising edge, whatever here I have the input is gonna write here, is gonna come to here. Is that okay? So this is how can you write? So if I wanna write, all what I need, just a rising edge here, okay, to write. Is that okay? And this is, this should happen, this should happen, this is, uh, this is should happen when writing is one and out, out with, uh, this one is zero, okay? So if, if, if this pin is one and this one is zero, the circuit here, the circuit here, uh, that's what I'm gonna explain, the circuit here should make an edge an edge here, so that this number is gonna be stored here. Okay. Let me finish and then I'm gonna take your question. Now, if I wanna, this is if you wanna write. If you wanna read, if you wanna read out of it, okay? So here, if you, if you see here, I added one input here, we call it enable, okay? So I made a very, a very small, so what this enable is? I did not explain any flip-flop before with enable, okay? It's just a very simple modification on what we did before. I'm gonna tell you what is this, okay, look here. So this is the D flip-flop I explained before. We have Q here, okay? Always the stored value here is gonna be shown here all the time. So if I add here, if I add here like, uh, add here like end gate, and then I'm gonna add here enable. And this will be the flip-flop I'm using here. Okay, so if the enable is zero, so the output here is gonna be zero. All the time, regardless, what is the stored here in the, what value you store here in the flip-flop? So it's like you hide, you hide the stored value if the enable is zero. If the enable is one, so whatever value here, I'm gonna get it here. You got what I'm saying? So very simple. So here I did this, this flip-flop has an enable. 
with enable here, this is sim similar to what we did before, but I just, we, we just made a small change here, okay? I added and get here, so that if the enable is zero, I'm gonna hide, I'm, I'm gonna hide the value here. You are not gonna get it here. I'm gonna get zero all the time. But if I put here one, okay? So I'm gonna get here, this value, I'm gonna read it, okay? So, and this, this is what should happen when you wanna read from memory. So if I wanna read from memory, so I have to put here one, I have to put here zero. And this one, this one here has to put here one and one. So once the enable here is one and the enable is one, so I'm gonna get the value here, the value here, and then I can read it, okay? Okay, let me let me put everything together now, okay? So let, let's, let's look at the example we have here. Number one, look here, guys. In case of location zero, so if I put here location zero, so this one is one, everything else is zero. Is that okay? So all of these are disabled. So if you look at the other ones here, enable, enable is zero. So you, so you can't read anything from here, okay? Uh, clock is zero, there is no clock for all of them. So this, all of these are disabled, okay? Now, now, if, if, if right, right is zero, output is one. So what's gonna happen here, if you look at the end gate, this end gate here, okay? Forget this ones because this one's already, this one's already, already zeros, okay? Because, because of this zero here, this zero here is gonna make both zero here everywhere for this ones, okay? But now here, because there are this, this one for write, this one for read, okay? Now, because I'm reading, so what happens here, this one is one and this one is zero. So this one should be off, okay? Because this one is connected to write. Now I'm reading, so, so this one should be one here. And because I have one and one here, so this one should be one and this one should be one. As I told you, when the enable is one, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the value of the flip flop, okay? And then you can read it from here. This is how can you read? So I'm gonna say it again. Once you put the address, once you put here, writing is zero, uh, output is one. Once you do that, you will find uh, here. If you look here, this end one input is connected to this one, and this one is one because I selected this word. I selected this data, and the other input here is coming from output enable. So in this case, you have one and one. So enable is one, enable is one. I told you when enable is one, the value stored here is gonna come out here and then you can read it, okay? Let's look at the second case before I take questions. Yeah, the second case here. Again, I'm gonna store the same location. So here, so these ones are off because I'm working on the first location here. But this time, write is one, output is zero. That means I wanna write, not read. So what's, look what's gonna happen here. This flip-flop is gonna be, uh, sorry, this, this end gate is off. Why? Because one input here is connected to read. Because read is zero, this one is off, okay? That's why here you can see zero and zero. But you can look at this one now, this one now becomes one. It was zero and then becomes one. It was zero, becomes one. And this one is connected to the clock, okay? So when this happened, so here you generated a clock, it was zero, and then once I put here one and one, this one becomes one. So you made an edge. So this edge, because of that, this value is gonna be stored here. This value is gonna be stored here, okay? Don't worry, I just here, uh, until now this part is not gonna be in the final exam, okay? Uh, but but I just wanna you to understand. I'm, I'm, there is one, the coming part will be in the final exam, it will be easy. But uh, because I know it's uh, we're in the last lecture, so I need to uh, to tell you exactly what we need from today. But what I want you to learn here, number one, what is memory addresses, location? How can we read memory? How can we write memory? Because memory is an important part of, from any digital system. Also, I give you some idea here. I already tell you for memory, I just put the address, read, you are gonna read one location. Write, you are gonna write to one location. But how, how hardware can do that? So I give you some example here, how hardware can do that, okay? Uh, any, sorry, you have a question here or I answered your question? Um, delay on the data inputs was larger than the uh, delay for the address. Would it be possible 
Okay, in general, this is a very good question. Okay, because what happens here, things has to be done in in a specific sequence. You got what I'm saying? So before before I tell the memory read or write, I have to make sure the address is there. So I have number one, I have to put the address, and then I tell the memory read. Okay, what if if I say read before I put the address? Okay, it shouldn't be this way. Otherwise, mistakes happen. You got what I'm saying? Same thing, I have to put address. I have to put, I have to put the data. And then I'm going to tell the memory to write. Okay. So this is a very good question. For sure, we have to consider these delays. Otherwise, the system is not going to work. Okay. Same thing, after I, after I tell the memory, write or, or read. If I tell the memory, read. Is that okay? Should I go and read the value? No, you have to wait because the memory has some delay. So if you once you tell the memory uh, read, the memory is not going to give you the value immediately. There is 10 millisecond, a 10 nanosecond, whatever the time is. But the memory is going to take some time. That is why before you go and take the value from there, you have to make sure the memory is done. That's why in logic system, this kind of delays are very important. You can't think so you have to wait. Otherwise, is you are going to get wrong values. Just in general in this course. Okay. If you have other, if you have multi multiplexer, whatever you have, everything takes time. If you do multiplication, you have to wait until multiplication is done. Otherwise, you are going to get wrong value. Okay. Anyway, so now, and this is a part, this is just a very easy part if you understand it correctly. This part will be in the final exam. Okay. Let me see where is. Uh... So now, I'm going to show you now uh, something very simple. Uh, if I have one kilobyte memory chip, so assume this is a memory chip that's one kilobyte, okay? One kilobyte, you know, one, ki one kilo here in, in digital system is actually 1,024. One kilo means 1,024, okay? So one kilobyte, that means we have inside this memory, we have 1,024 locations. We have 1,024 locations. Every location is storing one byte, is that okay? So if I know how many location I have, can I know how, how big is the address I have here or the opposite? I told you if there is a relation between the addresses, how, how many bits I need for address, uh, for address and how many location, okay? The relation is two to the power of something. So that means if you have 10,024, so how many, the address, how many bits I need in the address, it has to be 10, 10 bits. Because if you have 10 bits, 10 bits can give you numbers, okay? Can give you numbers until 1024. From zero until 1023. So in total, 1024. Got what I'm saying? So if you have 1024 location, that means I should have 10 addresses here. So if I give you the addresses, you can know how many location. If you give you location, you can know how many addresses. That's why if you see here, this is a separate memory chip. This memory chip can store up to one kilobyte. That's why you have, look how many addresses we have here, 10. So we need two, 10 bits here as an address here, okay? And this one has an enable here, enable, okay? So if this enable is one, so this one is gonna work, it's gonna read or write. If this one, if this one is zero, so it is disabled, it's not gonna read or write, okay? Anyway, so what I wanna show here, something very simple. What I wanna show here is given, Given four, so now I have four, four chips, four chips. Every chip is one kilobyte. So one kilobyte, one kilobyte, one kilobyte, one kilobyte, four chips. Is that okay? How, using for these four chips, I'm going to make one memory, memory system that has four kilobytes. Okay. So here you can see, using four different chips, this one, you can see everything here as only one chip as four kilobytes. You know, in case of four kilobytes, how many inputs you have in case of four kilobytes? Two to the power of 12, okay? So here, the input here has to be 12, not 10, okay? So now the question is that, so, so using four different one kilobytes, okay? How we can create one memory that's four kilobytes, okay? So the idea is very simple, as you will see right now, very simple idea, so here, so every chip here, because it's one kilobyte, I need 10, 10 bit addresses. 
in I need 10, 10, 10 bit address. But four kilobyte, it needs 12. So you have, I have two, two more bits, okay? Look at the idea how it works, very simple. So in total, we have here 8, A11, we have A10, we have A9, and then all the way until A0. This is the address we have. We have, we, we, because this is 4K, 4K, 4K bytes. So I need 12 bit. The 12 bit should be from 0 until 11. This is all, all the addresses I have. Look, very simple. Look at the idea. So I'm going to take the first, first 10, 10 addresses. I'm going to connect it to all of them here. Is that okay? So all of them, so here, 10 bit, 10 bit, the same 10 bit. And then I'm gonna use the last two bit to select one, one chip out of the four. <laughs> okay, so that means, that's why I have a decoder here. That means if I put here zero, 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 so actually you are enabling the first one so because this decoder is gonna output one, zero, zero, zero here. Okay, so now this, these ones are not gonna work, but this one is gonna work. Is that okay? If the two bits here have number one, so this is one, zero, zero, zero. So this one is gonna work. Okay. I think I have here, yeah. Yeah, I have here some animation to show to you. So here, what happens here, guys, if you bought, I told you, we have it starting from A, A11, A10, and then A9, up to, all the way up to A0. This part, this part is connected to all of them, okay? So if I put here zero, zero, so actually I'm selecting the first one here. So if I wanna read or write, I'm gonna read or write from this, this is chip. So it's like you have four chips and then in one system, one system, okay? So if we select the number one, so I'm, I'm gonna work on this one. Okay, if I select, if I put here number two, I'm gonna work on this one. If I put number three, I'm gonna work on this one, okay? So what you need to know here is, how can you calculate the addresses of each chip? Very simple, okay? And this will be in the exam. It's, it's just very simple if you understand it. It will be even simpler than this one. So what are range of addresses you have here for this one? What are range of addresses you have here? What range of addresses you have here? Very simple. Let's start, for example, with the first one here, this one here. For sure, this one is fixed. It has to be zero, zero. So all addresses here, they should have zero, zero because this part is fixed. And then you can change this one from zero, zero, zero until all the way until one, 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 until 10 ones, okay? And then also this one is zero, zero. That's it. This is the range of addresses for this chip. So the range of addresses of this chip here is, I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna fix the, the last two bits, zero, zero, because this is a common part for, for this chip, okay? And then this one has values from 10 zeros until 10 ones, and this part is fixed. This is the range of addresses you have for this chip. You got I'm saying very easy. So if you convert this one to hexadecimal, you can find here any addresses I have from 000 until 3FF here. Remember, I have 4K, I have 4K memory. That means the range of addresses I have from 00 all the way until FFF. This is the whole range because I have 12 bits. This is for the whole system, for the 4K, for the 4K byte. I should have 12 bits until here. However, however, as you will see right now, this whole range, part of it, part of it is gonna be here for this chip. Part of it is gonna be for this chip. Part of it will be for a chip and the last part will be for this chip. But the whole range of, of addresses, because 4K byte, I have 12 bits. The 12 bits should be from four zeros until four F. This is the whole range of addresses. But part of it is going to be here. Part of it is going to be here, part here, part here. Is that okay? That is why in your laptop, when you bring a memory bank or a chip, you can add chips. Okay? Because it can, can work as this one. But anyway, so what I'm going to ask you in the exam, I'm going to give you something similar than this one. Then I'm going to ask you what are, what are the addresses. That's it. What you have to do, what you have to do is whatever connected here, it has to get all, all the possible values, like the, what you see here, zero, 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 until one, 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 one. This is the whole range. But this part here, zero, zero, is fixed for this one. So for all this address has to be zero, zero here, and zero, zero here. Is that okay? Let's look at the second one. What is the range for the second one? It's exactly the same thing. 
So if you look at the second one here, you have here E11, you have E10, and then you have E9 until E0. This part should take all, all possible values from 10 zeros until 10 ones. All possible values. However, this part is fixed, which is 0, 1. 0, 1. So this is the beginning address, and this is the last address for this chip. That's why if you do this way, you will find, you will find this one is actually uh, for, for uh, starting from, for, I, th I think some this one is wrong. I'm sorry, I will correct it. Because this one here, no, no, this is correct. So E0, E0 to E9 should be take uh, from 10 zeros to 10 ones, okay? However, the, the first two bits should be have fixed. If you do this one, you will find the, this range from 400 until 7, 755. And if you look here, look here. This one is gonna take from 000, 0, 0 3FF. What comes after 3FF is actually 400. 0. So the next address will be here, okay? Let's look at the next one here. If you still you didn't understand it. So in exam, I'm not gonna complicate it. It's gonna be much simpler than this one. This is number one. Number two, all what I ask you do, give me the addresses. The first address, the last address, that's it. The way you have to do it is similar to what I'm explaining now. You know, if I wanna work on this chip, so this chip has from E0 until E9. So it should take zeros until ones. So this is the whole range. This is the beginning address. This is the last address. Okay. However, E10, E11, and E10 is fixed, which is one zero, all the way until one zero. So that's it. If you give me this one, you will get the full mark. Very easy, right? So, so if you do this one, you will find this is the range. Okay. So same thing. If you go to the last one here, it's exactly the same thing. You have one one. And then starting from E9 until it, uh, E0, you have uh, zeros until ones. And then also you have one one here. Okay. So if you see what is the beginning and what is the end, it will be something like that. Conclusion, conclusion. Look here, guys. I have. Okay, okay conclusion. I have, I was able to create four K byte memory out of 1K, 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 okay? In case of 4K byte, I should have 12 bit addresses, 12, 12 bits in the addresses, 12 bits, which is actually starting from 0, 0, 0 until F, F, F. This is the addresses in hexadecimal. Because here you have three, three values should be 12 bits and 12 bits, okay? However, however, from 0, 0, F, F, let's, let's look at the results I got. Until 3FF, this part, this range, this part of the, it's gonna be here. Okay, look at the next one here. 400 to 7FF. So starting from 400 to 7FF. 400 is just, just if you add one, you get 400. So this range will be here. Make sense? <laughs> if you look at the next one here, I got 800 BFF. So 800. 800, you just add one here, okay? Until eight, the B, sorry, BFF. So this part will be here, okay? Again, you will see this one like one chip, but inside it, it's actually multiple chips. So that's why in your laptop, you can add, you can add more chips because it's something, I'm not, I can say it's exactly something like that, but it's the same idea. You can add more chips, expand them, okay? Any questions? So again, in final exam, I'm not going to ask you to draw anything. I'm going to give you something like that, very simple. I'm going to just ask you, give me the first address and last address. That's it. You got what I'm saying? But it will be much simpler even than this. But you should understand. If I do that, you should understand. This value should put all, anything input to the memory, you have to put all possible values from 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. That's number one. Number two, whatever I have here, this one, two bits, three bits, one bit, whatever you have here, this, this value, you have to know what value here is gonna enable this one. And this value has to be fixed for all, all the addresses you have here, fix it. So all addresses here, so this, these two bits have to be zero and zero, okay? Any questions? Okay, I think, uh, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this video, okay? So uh, anyway, good luck uh, for in the final exam. And don't, don't forget to do the course evaluation. Uh, uh, and I give you the specific topics you need to study, 
okay so you need to you need to you need to study these uh, topics okay and as usual i'm i hate i i don't give my student hard time okay i just you have everything recorded i do my best the slides are easy to follow just understand it and even i tell you what what exactly you need to start okay before before sorry quickly before i forget for chapter uh, i already told you that but just in case uh, i want to make sure chapter five Chapter five is gonna be, I'm gonna give you only, only one question for chapter five, as that's what I said in my email, is gonna be about something similar to what we did here. It's about, uh, so yeah, yeah, something like that. I'm gonna give you a sequence. For sure, I'm gonna change the sequence. So I'm gonna give you a sequence, and then I'm gonna ask you uh, how to design a detector for this sequence. So you have here two examples. You have this example here, and you have another example here to detect this sequence, okay? Uh, also in the project, you did you did one, uh, it was uh, in project, it will give you also another example uh, in the project, but the, in the exams, I'm gonna give you, just to make it easy, I'm gonna give you only one input, similar to this one, not two inputs. In the project, you have two inputs, but here one, it will be, similar. one more thing you can do, number one, you should, un that's what all what you need to learn in this chapter, okay? Uh, so you need to understand this, this slides very well, uh, you can also go to YouTube. You can search for uh, sequence detector. You will find a lot of examples. People are explaining them if you want to learn more. Okay, that's all what we need in this chapter. Okay, thanks, guys.